The last session's name is Mapping the Rooms of Memory and it will be chaired by Madeline Holland. Okay, welcome back to our final session. Um, I'll introduce our first speaker, Suni Shin. Uh, she is a psychological counselor in Vienna. She has her MA in Education, Sociology, and Philosophy at Johannes Gutenberg Universite from Johannes Gutenberg Universite in Mainz. Uh, um, some of her recent conference presentations that sound like they relate to our topic today, um, one paper is called 1938 bis 2018, Eine Bilanz, Österreichische Erinnerungskulturen, um, and that was a presentation at the Lodge, organized by the Philological Faculty of the Lodge University. Um, one other recent paper, um, Autobiographie von Exil, Widerstand, Verfolgung und Lagererfahrung uh, at a conference in Vienna, organized by the Austrian Federal President in 2017. Suni's paper today is A Memory Capsule of Lodge. Jerusalem on Polish soil, Israel J. Singer's novel, Brothers Ashkenazi. Thank you very much. Janet Heda says, the story begins with 
the migration of German weavers to Poland. After the Napoleonic, Napoleonic Wars and their settlement in what would become <coughs> the center of a vast textile industry and a rapidly expanding Jewish population. Roots came to be called the Manchester of Poland. To Heda Brothers Ashkenazi is a large scale historical novel. Which was a triple neighborhood of Poles, Jews, and Germans. Which refers to a coexistence of these three national groups. And Shamus speaks of a multinational phenomenon of Polish German Jewish relations. When in 1820, there were 767 people in which two thirds of them were Poles, one third of them were Jews, and there were no Germans in 1831. However, the majority of inhabitants were Germans. 3,500 Germans lived in a town of 5,000 inhabitants. The first Germans came in 1822. After Napoleon's words, when Wunsch belonged to Congress Poland. In 1913, however, every second person from Wunsch was a Pole, while there were 75,000 Germans and 170,000 Jews. So in 1913, the Jews made up one third of the population. The center of Jewish economic life in Poland was Wuch. Only up to 7% of the Wuch population belonged to the Wojwadzi in charge of industry, commerce, and finance. The half of industrialists were Germans, the other half were Jews, while only few Poles were owners of industries. However, the majority of workers were Poles. But there were also many German and also many Jewish workers as well. When Singer called Wuch a Jewish Wuch or Jerusalem on Polish soil, Singer said that Wuch was a Jewish creation, a Jewish city built in Poland. Is the Singer's view correct? Krzysztof Kuznia refers to the dispute about the emergence of industrial route between Polish, German, and Jewish authors. With the singer, other Jewish writers agreed that Wuch was a Jewish creation. German authors, however, claimed that Germans had created Wuch. But according to Polish scholars, Wuch was created by the Poles. Bosnia reports. The German writers stressed the extent and the importance of the pioneering act of their fellow countrymen. <coughs> the Jewish authors underlined the merits of Jews as initiators of the textile workshop system. And for the Polish historians, the question for the emergence of which was also the question for the beginnings of capitalism in Poland, and whether this capitalism emerged by itself or if it was imported from abroad. So how can Singer say that industrial wood was a Jewish wood, a Jerusalem on Polish soil? What does Singer tell us about the role of Jews in wood and about their relations with Germans and Poles? Now it is time to tell the story Brothers Ashkenazi. We hear from Mendel Friedabaum, a Jew who learns from German weavers how to weave, that he wants to become a member of the German Weavers Guild. So he puts down his captain and shaves off his beard. 
But the German weavers refused his application. The Polish authority, authorities, however, allowed him to open a weaving workshop. Single remarks. Soon Jewish weaving looms rattled in the old town. At the beginning, the Jews stayed in their own quarter. It seemed that the houses were topped up overnight. Little by little, Jews moved from the narrow quarter to the Wilkie district. From the countryside, many Jews come to Wuch. Long enough, they had endured the cruelty of their aristocratical land laws. These Jews started to hire German weavers, who could not afford their own workshops. The German weavers prepare a Jewish employer because they have to kiss a German employer's hand two times a day. And when a Jewish employer catches a German worker with some wool in his pocket, he does not beat him as a German employer would. He just demands to put the wool back. We also hear that Solomon David Press, a Jew as well, wants to buy a large estate from the Kolesky family. Price tells the family that he will open a glass factory and gets the land. However, Price builds a new suburb of a butch called Balut. When the Karnaskis find out, they go to court. The Polish judges rule in favor of the Jew. Price travels to England where he buys machines and finds an engineer and a chemist. On his return to Wuch, he opens a weaving mill with mechanical looms. As engineer and chemist want to work on Sabbath, Price hires only Polish and German workers who can work on Sabbath as well. So Jewish workers get no job. The German weavers who do not have mechanical looms are angry about the price effect. Calling it a Jewish instrument of the devil. They burn the factory down. Then the Germans go to the Jewish quarter where they destroy steel and rape. Soon, Price opens his factory again. Then the German weaving masters get loans from Polish banks to buy mechanical looms as well. Singer writes about Heinz Hunze, the German owner's owner of a big weaving factory, who had immigrated with only two looms from Saxonia. In his factory, Hunze is the is the absolute king. But who is Hunze's sales representative? Sales representative. This is Abraham Hirsch Ashkenazi, the leader of the Jewish community and father of the two brothers Ashkenazi. <coughs> when Hunt is angry at a former staff member who has dared to open a factory of his own, Hunt screams, I beat him to death. Ashkenazi replies, Oh no, Mr. Hunze, the best would be to reach an agreement with him. It is written that shalom, peace, is the foundation of the world. And Ashkenazi wants to tell Hunze the story of Kamza and Bar Kamza. Hostility led to the destruction of Jerusalem. So, single mentions the contributions of Germans and Poles. But the project of industrial wood is guided by Jews who have been living in Poland for centuries. They seek for technical innovation and human understanding, shalom. 
Samus tells us about two opposing views of Buddha. Samus says that um, by this wealth, Raymond's name for Butch, the promised land, had an ironic knot. Raymond did not show a promised land, but the apocalyptic vision of a city moloch that eats man. In 1911, Sigmund Batskiewicz called Butch an evil city, even saying that which have taken its name from a Polish village and gave shelter to Poland's enemies, thereby referring to Germans and Jews. <coughs> Another view of Butch had author Kuliczynski. He said that Butch is a big, proud castle, the sign of its creative work, and the youngest child of the college, good mother earth. <coughs> and in a theater play, Kuzinski let the city of Wood say, I am your good motherland, your provider and good fairy. I am Miss Wood. What does the singer himself think of Wood? Is the singer proud of the Jewish wood or is he critical of it? In the singer's novel, there is a man named Nisan. Nisan's father is a rabbi and Nisan is a student in his father's school. Nisan says that Moses just invented the Bible, that Moses never received the Torah from Mount Sinai. So Nisan has to leave his father's house and becomes just a weaver and a follower of Karl Marx, carrying the book as capital always with him. Singer writes, as his father was convinced that the Torah must be passed on, so Nisan was convinced that he, Nisan, had been called to pass on the new Torah. During the First World War, Nisan meets a good industrialist in Russia. His son says, go on with your production. Soon everything will be taken over by us. So Nissan is for production, but this production is for the workers' benefit as well. Nissan resembles the young Israel singer whose father was a rabbi too. Israel singer wrote about his own life. At the age of 18, I decided that I did not want to be a Brazilian man and I gave up my theological studies. Singer added, I wanted to have a modern education and proceed to acquire one by taking casual lessons with inexpensive pri uh, private tutorials while earning my livelihood by doing all kinds of old jobs. Israel Singer left the home and visited his parents, clean shaven and dressed in modern clothes. So probably Israel Singer shared at least at one point in his life the, the opinion of Nissan, which should go on, but the direction of Shalom giving real benefit to the workers. The program after the destruction of the Price Factory is not the last one in which. Sorry. No, no, no. Oh. No. Seven. The program after the destruction of the Price Factory is not the last one in which reported by Sina. When the wages are cut, Polish workers begin to strike. They go to the factory of Frida Baum, screaming. Let us hang this damned Jew, Frida Baum. But in front of the factory, there are soldiers shooting into the crowd. The next day, a pogrom starts. The workers shout, now we look after the Jews. We go to Ballet. Soldiers are sent from Warsaw. 
Upon arrival, the Georgians heal that there is a problem. So the military does not stop the program immediately, but wait some days till the program gets worse and worse. At the end, a beggar sings this sad song. Heal from the scare, heal from the belief, which came to the Jews of Balut. In May, you people there, their world would think going. They raced like mad ducks. Day and night they came in crowds, hurting women and men and child, coming in their way. O Lord of heaven and earth, stretch out your merciful hand. Save your dis dispersed flock and guide us to the Holy Land. in which year there was such a program. Historian George Tomasevsky, however, reports that in May 1892, there was a workers' protest in Butch, lasting one week with the army moving in against it. And near the end, there were attacks on two shops and pubs. Now we know about Butch or Congress Poland. Before the First World War. But what about Butch of New Poland? After the First World War, Singer tells us that Butch is ruined. The warehouses are full, but there are no customers. Neither do Jews get work in the factories, nor get the social welfare. When Jewish guys apply for hard labor like road construction, the employment officers shout, Out with you, Moshes! No matter if you starve to death. <coughs> so Jewish youth starts to flee. Singer remarks to America, Argentina, Palestine. In the late 1920s and early 1930s, there is an exodus of Jews from the country where their ancestors settled 1,000 years ago. The Poles who observe this exodus do not know whether they shall therefore cry, single right rights, which resembled an amputated part of the body. It flashed a last time in heaven before the world sucked its last lifeblood. The, the elixir of life, as the singer calls the witch dream, <coughs> consisting of prospector and skill, has disappeared. So, according to singer, the witch tribal neighborhood is already at the end of the 20s in danger. Two historians agree with the single story. Ludwig Wolotska says that the textile industry of which was hit by a crisis in 1929. The result was collapse of the economy there in this situation, there was, in fact, a strong emigration from Butch. What is the last scene of the book? When Max Askenazi, the former king of Butch, dies, the whole of Butch comes to his funeral. funeral. In the chemistry, wind blows dust in everybody's face. The funeral guests complain, sand, what we have built here was all built on sand. Number nine, please. Okay. In 19... 37, the noble Brothers Ashkenazi was adapted into a play 
and was staged at Yiddish Art Theatre in New York. To today, the Small Brothers Ashkenazi movie. Let us hope that soon we can watch Brothers Ashkenazi on screen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan, for your paper on this um, very interesting and important Yiddish novel.